Imagine being in the biggest game of your life, the Super Bowl, but you have the worst migraine headache imaginable. So bad, in fact, you are forced to sit out the second quarter. Now, imagine fighting through it, putting up historic numbers, and being named Super Bowl MVP. That's exactly what Broncos running back Terrell Davis did in Super Bowl 32. Everything was set up. Everything was set up. Terrell Davis to come home, win his first Super Bowl after a great season. You're going to get the ball. Probably going to be the MVP if you win this. Physically feeling fine. Uniforms looking good. Looking clean. Visually, you already saw it. Ready Visually, you saw it. I, I, I'm telling you, I've already, I had already played the game in my mind. So I knew I'd already played every scenario, everything in my mind. I was already kind of seen us hoisting that trophy at the end of the game. Did you play the scenario where you couldn't see? Did not see that one. <laughs> didn't see that one coming. <laughs> <laughs> didn't see that one coming. No, oh. I didn't see that one coming. And let me tell you what happened. Normally, I have a routine before the game. So I got, you know, you go through the locker room. I got uh, whatever it is. You put your socks on, pads on, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. But at the pregame meal, I have to take medication to abort migraines or mm-hmm. even you know, prevent them. So um, I, I must have been too excited or something during the pregame meal. This time I did I just, I just forgot. You forgot to take your medication? I just forgot. And then we play, start, you know, start to play the game. And you start to play the game, and you're doing okay early on in the game, yeah. but then you, you get hit in the head or something like that? Is that what caused the migraine? What, what do you think triggered the migraine? Yeah, there was no question about it. it was, uh, there was a tackle. I think, I'm, I'm not sure who the defender was, but his knee, his knee right atop of my helmet because mm. I feel like this, bam. And I remember it was just like a blunt force, like, bam. Mm. And it was like it just kind of rocked my world a little bit, so I was I was kind of dazed, and I was um, I was on my knees. Normally, um, when I get a migraine, the first thing that goes is my vision. It starts to, you know, people say, "Well, what does that mean? You, are you blind?" I said, "No, I'm not blind. You, it just nothing is clear. It just everything is is in pieces, and you can you can identify things." And I can I just remember in my mind just saying, "No, no, no, not now." So what I didn't want to do was stand in the game, be selfish, not tell the coaches that I couldn't see, fumble the football, put our team in a bad spot, mm-hmm. and it cost us a game. Mm-hmm. So I let Mike know, hey, when we change quarters, the trainer, Steve Antonopoulos, uh, call him Greek, he knew and he had, already, he, he had already known about this condition and we've already been through a, a number of issues with it. So, But the fact that you actually went into a game and you heard your coach, I think the audio of Shanahan basically telling you, hey, we don't need you to see yeah. on this play. <laughs> we just need you to go in there because they're going to think that you have the ball. And if you don't go in there, it's not going to work. Right? Yeah, what he said was, TD, you know, don't worry about seeing right now because, you know, we need you in there. And if you're not in there, they won't believe we're going to run the football. So if I'm on the sideline, then they think they know it's going to be a pass. Mm-hmm. Okay, what was the play? The play was... Um, it was fake 15, uh, quarterback keep right, and I think it was fullback slide. Okay. Right. So people give me, they, people always say, well, you said you couldn't see, but you sure made a lot of people miss when you, when you did that <laughs> fake. I said, well, again, it's hard to explain. I, I couldn't see, but I can see enough to get out of somebody's way. So when you're thinking about it now, what do you think? I mean, it's like, once again, I'm, these numbers are amazing. You yeah. dominated the game. The stats said it all. You were the MVP of that, that, that football game. Yet, when people look at that Super Bowl and they think about greatest moments and yeah. great moments and courageous moments in Super Bowl history, it's they remember great. you going in there, <laughs> getting a fake handoff. You were a decoy on that play, so a, a play could work. But you know, again, for me, it was it was about doing what I could do to help us win the game. Mm-hmm. It, it didn't, I didn't think twice about it. I didn't think about what if. You know, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't thinking about self-preservation or, no, whatever I got to do, man, let's do it. I don't think it's dawned on you how big that is, how big of a moment that is. I, you know what? I don't think any of this has dawned on me yet in terms of just even the Super Bowls themselves. Mm-hmm. And the older I get, the more I start to appreciate what, what we did. The moments that you see now when you see the, how big the game is, when you see how many people watch it, how many different countries watch football, whether it's a little kid who was, who was growing up and they watched that one game and they saw Terrell Davis either go on a game and, you know, play through a migraine. I got a t- uh, tons of, email, you know, like mail from parents saying thank you for what, you, what, you've, you know, what you've done. Mm-hmm. What did I do? Mm-hmm. You, know, you, showed, you know, you showed courage. You showed playing through adversity. And it helped my kid because he wouldn't do X, Y, Z. Now he's better at that. Uh-huh. So you don't realize when you do something like that, how it affects everybody else around you. When you hear people talk about 
one of the gutsiest moments or bravest moments. Yeah. Do you, do you think of it the same way? I, I appreciate when somebody acknowledges that because it's, it's difficult to play in a game with a migraine. I don't care. I don't care what would have happened to me that day. I just think I would have played through anything. Right. I, I, th there was no guarantee that I would ever be in that moment again. So mm -hmm. regardless of what was going to happen, I was going to fight through and play through whatever it was I had to. 